Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Well, this one is going to be kind of like a bonus video. It was unexpected, uh, but just yesterday, these two bottles dropped in my area. So I ran around, I was able to find a bottle of each, and so I decided I'd go ahead and get this review shot uh, right away so that all my viewers, both on Patreon and YouTube, will be able to see this uh, as soon as possible. Now, of course, as always, I'm using my Patreon page as the launch pad, so they're going to get this video the very next day. Uh, YouTube, you think I'm going to fit you in next week, so it's going to be a little earlier than the typical two-week gap, uh, but again, this was kind of out of the blue. So, all right, let's talk about the whiskeys we're going to be taking a look at. We have the Blue Spot Irish Whiskey. It's a pot still whiskey, seven years of age, bottled cast strength, Middleton Distillery, okay? Now, these both actually come from the Middleton Distillery. Uh, this Red Breast, same exact pot stills, distillate. Both are being made from malted and unmalted barley. Um, this one does not have an age statement, but Red Breast last year was released in kind of these like, you know, batch A, batch Bs, and so on. They were going to like store picks, and so they were, most of those were age stated at 14 years old. Some were better than others, okay? Some of those casks had a little bit of sh uh, sulfur on them, so um, I think that's why they were kind of testing out markets, seeing what really people were liking, not liking, so on. Uh, but this year, they did the U.S. exclusive release, so that's what this is. And even though it doesn't have an age statement, I imagine it's probably upwards of 14 years old with probably on the low end, maybe about some seven-year-old Irish whiskey in it, okay? Now the difference, the other difference between the two is the type of barrels that they're using. They both use ex-bourbon barrels for some of it. Then from there, Redbreast is using a um, Spanish sherry casks for some of the maturation. And then they're kind of uh, marrying those two and finishing it in Oloroso casks. So they're trying to bolster up that sherry profile using the Oloroso. Now the blue spot over here they're using ex bourbon barrel, they're using Oloroso sherry cask, and then they're kind of following the tradition of like the red spot where they're throwing in some Madeira cask as well. So the Madeira finished Irish is all going on in this one, okay? Now, again, 58.7% retail pricing. I want to say the red breast was the more expensive. It was about $100, and the blue spot, I was getting that for about $85, $90, right there. So just about a $10, $15 difference. All right, 58.7%. We're going to go ahead and probably start with the red breast. No age statement, but that's okay. Let's see on the nose. Wow. Sweet, fruity, pretty savory. So what I'm picking up right away is a lot of caramel. There's a lot of caramel drenching everything. The fruits kind of feel like apples, maybe a hint of pear, plum for sure, a little fig, some dates, a little spritz of a citrus oil, kind of leaning towards a little lemon, not a lot, just a little bit, cinnamon, maybe even a little bit of a clove and white pepper in this one. There is a grassy kind of herbal component to it. It's not mint, not really mint. It's not really sticking out to me like, you know, sometimes eucalyptus will be in there and that'll kind of, it can present itself as a mint sometimes. But this one, I think it's gonna be a blend of herbs and I'm gonna have to wait to taste it to see if I can figure that out. Other than that, there's this really nice Kind of this floralness to the fruits as well. So you get all these mixed fruits. There's even a little bit of strawberry in there. Cooking down and a little bit of caramel. And then you get this, um, you get the spices. Then you get this dark chocolate. That little herbal kick. And the floralness to me is like a little bit of violets, I would say, on this one. Really nice. Very complex nose. Wow. There's a lot going on in that glass. All right, reset the nose there. All right, on to the blue spot. 
Let's see if it knows it's about the same or what the what's the big difference here? Oh wow. Yeah, that's a big difference. I don't want to go back to that one just yet. Hold on. I thought about it, but not yet. Big brown sugar here. Very brown sugar and caramel. This one smells a little more confectionery. A little more straightforward. It's not as complex as we were getting here. This one, red apples, figs, a little bit of dates, honeyed malt, cinnamon. There's a sourness going on in here as well, though. I didn't pick up any sourness over here. There's some sourness on this blue spot. Almost like a, like a sour cherry, sour cherry component to kind of go in with those dried apples, those apples and um, maybe a little bit of strawberry, this, those uh, dried fruits, figs, dates. Wow, okay. Cinnamon's pretty, showing the ABV pretty strongly. But there is this kind of also this kind of funky, almost roncio type note going on. So, you know, typically in old cognacs, you'll get that kind of earthiness, sometimes mushrooms, sometimes it'll come off like a, a you know, an odd cheese or um, soil, damp soil component. And in here, it's kind of feeling, I think it's a, it is more of like a nuttiness, almost like a, a walnut. But then you get that, it's a little bit of a mushroom walnut. And then you get that little sour cherry thing. So it's kind of getting, there's that little odd spot in it. But that's probably because I think they said again this was containing it says seven years old but it contained whiskeys upwards of 20 so I think some of those older casks or even just some of the Madeira casks can give you some of those you know unique uh, earthy tones so I think that's what that's coming from all right so let's go ahead and start tasting them we're gonna start with the red breast wow yes much fresher There's almost like a little hint of like an underripe pineapple as well to this one. Which isn't surprising because a lot of these older red breasts will have a lot of tropical fruit components. So I'm just, I'm not going to say that's any kind of a dominant feature here. It is still more on the apples, cherries, and it's almost like brandied cherries. And then you get the dates, figs and all that and a little bit of strawberry as well. And that floralness. All right, here we go. Mm. Wow. I like it. I do like it. Viscosity. I'm just going to talk about the viscosity. I'm not going to start grading it yet. I always do that on the second sip. I will say viscosity is not quite as rich as I was hoping. It's a good solid medium viscosity. It does feel really nice and creamy initially, so I like that, so it bumps that viscosity up just a smidge over medium. Wow, really evolving on the palate. But initially you get hit right away with this big caramel bomb. You get this uh, the kind of like um, red apples if they were being kind of cooked down a little bit in that caramel. You get the uh, little berries, and again, the brandy cherries, a little bit of strawberries cooking in as well. Oh. The cinnamon, a little bit of a white pepper kick to it, a little clove in there as well, kind of ramping things up as they hit the mid palate. Gets really chocolatey on the back end. But the thing that I'm really kind of focusing on right now is how up early, right as soon as you get hit with all the caramel and the fruits, there's also that big herbal hit right underneath it. And I mean, it is riding right underneath everything. So it's, you'll notice it right away. But you're so focused on all the fruits and the, the caramel um, that it may not be your first impression, okay? 
but let me go ahead and get another a little more research going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that and that little citrus lemon oil along with that herbal component. And the herbal component to me is going to feel like um, a little bit of a thyme. It is thyme, rosemary, a little touch of eucalyptus. If you mix those three together, give that little lemon oil on top and maybe even a little bit of a grassiness as well. That's what's kind of running underneath everything. Those brandy cherries are joined with a little bit of a fresh, like a, just some more of a fresh cherry as well as it starts going on to the mid palate, it freshens up a little bit. And I think it's the strawberries kind of helping that out. The violets that I picked up on the nose are in there, but in here they feel a little more like a dried fl uh, flower petal, that type thing. It's not big, it's not out of proportion with anything else. It just adds one more layer of complexity to it. The chocolate, golly, the chocolate, dark chocolate, just pouring on the finish. Everything else still going. Matter of fact, there's even a little bit of a pecan and roasted pecan and walnut characteristic that's rolling on the back end. I think those kind of came in with the chocolate right after the mid palate. Finish. It's going pretty well. It's not super long, not super strong on the finish, but it, what it does, it does really well, and it happens really intensely up front. Now, it does not drink, you know, super hot, so at 58.7, it's drinking very, very well. All right, now we're going to move on to Blue Spot. Get the double rinse. Okay, for the Blue Spot, seven-year cast drinks again, 58.7. You know what? That's what I thought. There is a little edge of... I didn't pick this up on the palette, though. That's a sad thing. But there is a little bit of coconut on this one. It's not on this one. But I knew there was something really drastically different between these two. And that's surprising because, coming again, coming from the same distillery, for them to just be able to work their blends and, and to get such different profiles is very, very uh, cool in my book. All right. But on the nose, the blue spot. Slightly buttery. More, more brown sugar in with the caramel. So overall, the nose feels more sweet. Confectionery. Mm. The dried this this one has more like a dried apple to me. The cherries feel a little brighter than they did over here. These were kind of like brandied, and then later on they were kind of joined with a little bit of fresh. Over here, it's a little bit more of a kind of a maraschino cherry to me. With those apples, dried red apples. There's a little hint, there's a hint of strawberry to it. But a good amount of, there's a good amount of plums. Kind of a sour, there's a sour tone going on with the fruits though. So to me it's almost going to be like a sour cherry, sour plum, uh, in with the Let's say red apples cooked down a little bit, a um, little bit of strawberry in there, maraschino cherries. Yeah. And then you get this sour cherry, sour plum aspect going on in there, at least on the nose. There's a little bit of cinnamon. It's not really joined with too much other spices to me. Maybe a little. I don't know, it's close, but. Mostly just cinnamon. And then there's this kind of like this little earthy. It's not it's not like potting soil, anything like that. There's some whiskeys that definitely get that, but on this one it feels more like a little bit of a mushroom tone. Walnut and mushrooms and Yeah, it's kind of a 
Interesting. It almost reminds me of Rancio, which you'll find on old cognacs. All right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and taste it, though. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. A little more. Wow. Definitely a little more viscous here. This one feels like it's medium high. It's heading really viscous, but the ABV shows itself a little brighter here because remember I told you this one's more just focused on the cinnamon. Well, that cinnamon, as it ramps up, it really kind of shows the intensity. So you feel that 58.7 here, but the viscosity is really nice. Mm -hmm. Sweet and sour component, dried red apples, plums, Sou slightly soured, um, sour cherries in there, vanilla is running, kind of a sweet oak characteristic providing a little bit of bitterness along the bottom, also joined by a little bit of walnut characteristic on the back end. <clears throat> on the back end, there's a little hint of dried shaved chocolate. But it's mostly about the kind of like roasted walnuts to me. A little hint of an orange oil in there. All right, let's rerun it. Double check. Mm. Yeah, that's that sweet and sour. It's pretty savory because there's also like a, a salted butter component going on with the blue spot. Yeah, and then you get all that, the cherries, pretty bright. That's pretty much the dominant note is going to be the cherry. You're going to get those little bits of strawberries, those dried apples, big brown sugar just steamrolling everything. You get that uh, roasted kind of walnuts, maybe a little bit of a little bit of touch of pecan that shows up on the mid palate. Really hang on as the chocolate kind of shaves underneath that. And then on that back end, that's where you're really kind of picking up that Roncio. And, it, and I have to kind of think about it as Roncio because to me it is this really damp, earthy, almost like an old barrel would taste. Um, it's lost the sweetness, so it's just focusing more, a little bit more on the bitter component. And that's kind of what I pick up in here on the back end. Like almost like a little bit of a mushroom, walnut, earthiness to it. Is that a, you know, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. I like the complexity of that. When I taste these two side by side, you definitely see a big difference. If you want that fluty, uh, fruity, floral, uh, really nice balance and complex Irish whiskey, this is the one. If you want a little more of that straightforward profile of a traditional Irish with just a little more intensity and a kind of like this really deep, um, tone to it then probably the blue spot's going to be the way to go yeah but there is another there is another whiskey that comes to mind here that probably should be in this lineup and i think what i'm going to do uh since this is kind of like a bonus video i'm actually going to i think i'll throw that on the end uh for the patreon video so if you're a patron of mine uh, you'll get to see this other whiskey come in here this is about the same abv i think it's going to do fairly well but we're going to find out but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video review. Thank you, as always, for joining me, uh, regardless of platform. I'm glad to have all my viewers. So everyone, please have a great day and cheers.